Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Oh, that's so much better. It is very, very nice to see you all and to welcome you to BTBJ as we celebrate Shabbat and as we celebrate with Zoe and her family on this eve of becoming Bat Mitzvah. It is a very exciting moment that I know that you've been thinking about for a long, long time. And it is a joy to get to be with all of you and to welcome your family and friends uh, with us as well. So we are going to start our service on page four as we prepare to welcome Shabbat with the lighting of our Shabbat candles. And I would love to invite up the Walensky family, Zoe and Lori and Andy and Eli, to help us light the candles as we breathe in Shabbat, as we settle into this space, and as we prepare to celebrate Shabbat together. <laughs> We're going to start sparkling soon. Oh, that would be bad. <laughs> bad, cool, you know, potato, potato. I wish we had a, I don't have a lighter. <laughs> so. <laughs> this gives us more time to prepare to welcome Shabbat. Amen. Mazel tov. You did it. Yashka. And Zoe, you're going to come straight over here to the middle as we turn to page five and uh, prepare to sing Shalom Alechem. And when we sing the words of Shalom Alechem, we are welcoming the angels of Shabbat into our community, into our celebration. Um, we pray that they will bless us. Perhaps we will bless them as well. And then we bid them farewell. And so we welcome all of you. And thank you for joining us this Shabbat. We hope that you are blessed uh, while you are with us and as you celebrate. And we wish you a, a safe return when the time comes for that. So Zoe will lead us on page five with Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hashari, Malachi El Yom, Mi Mela, Malachi Hamlachim Hakadosh Baruchu, Malachem Lishalom, Malachi Hashari. Say, 
and have a seat. We continue on page 10 with Yadid Nefesh. Yadid Nefesh of Harathaman Mishuch of Dach Eretzunach Yarutz of Dach Imu'ayal Kabbalat Shabbat. And this part of our service is something that we insert on Friday evenings. Normally we have our Mari service, our evening service, and we just kind of get right down to business with it and open with Bar Hu. But on Shabbat, we kind of ease into our prayer. And so we have all of these extra psalms that come before that are supposed to allow us to really kind of take that pause, maybe take a nice deep breath if you'd like. And to really allow yourselves to settle into this moment and to think about what you might also need to really allow yourself to open up and welcome the peace of Shabbat into your hearts and into this community. And so with Yismichu on page 14, it says at the red arrow, the heavens shall be glad and the earth rejoice, the sea in its fullness roar. And so we have this scene of this exuberance in nature. And it, I think of it also as an invitation to acknowledge the joy in our own lives. And so I know that this has been a big week for a lot of people as school has ended and, um, and things are kind of moving towards summer. And so I want to ask all of you, as we move into Shabbat and as we welcome this time and this space, are there things that you experienced this week that were particularly joyful or happy that you want to hold on to and carry with you as we move into Shabbat and out again into the week. If there is anything, I invite you to share that with the rest of us if you'd like so that we too can share in your joy. Anyone? So I'm going on my honeymoon in August. And I heard back from the great synagogue of Sydney 
that, yes, I will be reading Haftorah there the weekend that I'll be in Sydney. And their response was, <laughs> we are looking forward to welcoming you to our continent, the best continent. <laughs> <laughs> So you'll have to report back on that and let us know if you agree. <laughs> well, I can share that it was very exciting this week that my older daughter finished third grade, which it feels like this year just sort of like went by in an instant somehow. And my younger daughter, who is five, today, finally, thank God, got her first haircut. <laughs> she had kind of been refusing for a while. But we made it happen. Is the barber okay? The, bar <laughs> the barber is okay. She did kind of, you know, run into the house a little bit of the, like, don't look at me, don't look at me, um, as, as you know that she does. Uh, but it's still very long. It's just a lot healthier. And I told her that I was very proud of her for being so brave and doing this new thing that she had never done before. So lots of, lots of new, new and exciting things in my house. Anyone else care to share with the community? Yeah. Awesome. Nice job. Nice. Pretty well, yeah, to being too modest. So you're like a rock star karate person, yeah, maybe. Hold on. You don't want to cross Nessie on a dark street. Or I do if I, she's on my side. <laughs> if I'm walking on a dark street, I'll make sure to have you with me. <laughs> awesome. Anyone else? Hey, Hayden, did something happen for you this week? Okay. You sure about that? I'm very proud of you. It was this week. It was this week. It was this week. <laughs> this week starts with Sunday, Hayden. <laughs> it was, yeah. <laughs> Mazel tov on your confirmation. And you also got the news in your family that both of your boys are going to be competing as a part of the Maccabi Games in San Diego this July. So I am very excited to hear more about that. Yeah. Some swimming and some golf, right? Well, I invite you to continue to think about this question um, because as we, as we move through the, the Psalms of Kabbalah Shabbat, we can even sometimes think about them as each one is a different day of the week. And so if, we're not davening every single one of them tonight, but if we were, as we approach each one, if, if we can let it be an invitation to kind of even look back on our week and to really give, ourself, give ourselves a moment to think about what happened Sunday, which in fact was after Shabbat, and so it's a part of this week. What happened Monday? What happened Tuesday? And to think each day... Um, and kind of take an accounting of our days and in, in that way take an accounting of our lives. Our, you know, each day can kind of pass by so quickly if we are not paying attention. And so whether it's things that were difficult and hopefully growthful or whether it's things that were joyful, um, you know, we can end up going from one to the next without really appreciating it. So Kabbalah Shabbat I think is an opportunity to really kind of take that, like, to, to press pause so that we can think back on, on the weeks that passed and take with us all of those, all of those special, special things, special, special experiences um, into Shabbat together. So I invite you to join me at the Red Arrow um, on page 14. <laughs> Is me who has shamay, is me Four lines up from the bottom in the Hebrew or in the transliteration with Psalm 97. <laughs> 
which is a prayer in which we are uh, told to kind of greet Shabbat as if Shabbat were a bride. Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride. Let us greet Shabbat in that same manner that we would welcome a bride, with that same excitement, uh, with that same enthusiasm. And that's the way that we're supposed to feel each and every week when we get to this moment. <laughs> Maybe 
seated. Thank you, Zoe. We continue on page 27 with the psalm for Shabbat. Page 28. into the Mari section of our service, into our evening service. And so hopefully you're feeling a little bit more warmed up, a little bit more open, a little bit more settled into this space. And uh, I will invite you to rise as we get ready to recite Barhu, our call to worship together. Continue on page forty. Shema Shut the car, 
spread this canopy of peace over us, over all of Israel, over the entire world. And we can look outside of ourselves and pray that this peace will come to those who need it. And we can also look within and find the ways in which we might be able to be bringers of peace um, for others in the world. So as we sing these words together, I invite you to hold in your mind and in your hearts those that you might be thinking of in this moment who might be in need of a little extra peace in this moment, a little extra safety, a little extra security, and we pray that they can go to sleep in peace, wake up in peace, and whether they're people close to us physically in this room or in our lives or those around the world um, who are dealing with war and other atrocities, uh, we can send our prayers to all of those in need as we sing these words together. for Vishamru, and Zoe will come on up and help lead us. Eli, do you want to come on up too? Eli, 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 Eli. You have the moral support of your big brave sister up here. Vishamru, or you can look at that. Oh, good, you know where they are. Good. Vishamru Bene Israel and Tashabah Vasek and Tashabah Lidor Tamburito Lam Bene Yuvain Bene Israel Oti 
Amen. 
So this week we read Parshat Naso, as always well aware, which is the longest Torah portion that we have all year. Lucky you. Last week we began the Book of Bamidbar, in which we learned about a census that Moses was taking of the Israelite community. And this week in Parshat Naso, the census continues, and some of the groups that uh, also get broken down in this Parsha into further subgroupings. And we learned this week about some of the specific jobs that the Levites have as far as setting up and breaking down and helping to run things in the tents of meeting. It wasn't only somewhere where the priests kind of did everything. The priests couldn't do anything without the Levites doing their jobs. And at the end of the Parsha, we learned about the final steps that were taken in order to dedicate the tabernacle so that they could officially be open for business. So we have been preparing for this for a very long time. Um, and now is the, we have all of the rules, and so now they're actually going to get started. After Moses finishes setting up the tabernacle and anointing and consecrating all of its furnishings, as it's, it's described in the Parsha, we then learn of an elaborate system in which the chieftains of Israel brought gifts to God, which were then to be used in the tabernacle. But the way this is described seems rather curious and definitely long-winded. We also learned that no word is wasted in Torah, so there must be a reason for this. We learned first that the chieftains brought before Adonai six carts and 12 oxen. It says, Moses, we then learn, accepts these gifts and divvies them up inside the tent of meeting so that the items that are needed for each different job that we just talked about in the census earlier in the Parsha would then be given to the appropriate group so everyone has what they need. As the text continues, we will also learn not only that there were carts, but what was on the carts. Um, because it starts out a little vague to just say like there's oxen and there's carts. Were they empty carts? So we then learn what goes into these carts, and as Zoe knows very well, each chieftain, we will learn, brings exactly the same thing. Now, if we went to a birthday party or a bat mitzvah, and we all brought the exact same gift, it might be a little awkward. But in this case, what we're going to learn is that it was actually necessary. And what's interesting is that we don't have a description of God telling Moses or the chieftains that this is what they're supposed to bring. We do have that when it comes to the carts and the ox, but not in terms of what's inside the cart. And so there's a 16th century commentator from Portugal named Abravanel, and he explains that it wasn't any coincidence or accident um, or you know some faulty wedding registry that wasn't like saying like, yep, you got it, already, already fulfilled, um, that led to all of these duplicates of gifts that all of the chieftains brought. Rather, it was the chieftains that all came together and talked about this, and they agreed that they were all going to bring the same thing, and they agreed what that would be, what it would include, the entire list. We also learned that God dictated that each chieftain would bring their offerings on a different day, and that the order to figure out kind of what, you know, who was going to go on which day would be the same as the order in which the, that we, we, we learned that they were to march through the wilderness. So there was a very specific order that we've, are, that, that we've learned about of where each tribe would set up camp um, in relationship to each other and in, in relationship to the, to the tents of meeting, and that there's also an order in which when the cloud lifted that they would kind of travel on. Um, it's kind of like having your sign spot in line, you know, in school when you were younger. Um, there's like the line leader and the person in the back, so they had their assigned spot. And so that was the way in which um, they were also supposed to bring their gifts. And so the result in our text is that there is an identical list that goes on verse after verse for about 50 verses, with the only change being which person from which tribe is bringing the offering and on which day. But the rest of the list, as we'll hear tomorrow, is the same. For example... The first one says, on the first day was Nachshon, son of Aminadab, of the tribe of Judah, 
his offering, one silver bowl weighing 130 shekels and one silver basin of 70 shekels by the sanctuary weight, both filled with choice flour with oil mixed in for a meal offering, one gold ladle of 10 shekels filled with incense, one bull of the herd, one ram, and one lamb in its first year for a burnt offering, one goat for a sin offering and for his sacrifice of well-being, two oxen, five rams, five pigos, and five yearling lambs. That was the offering of Nachshon, son of Aminadab. You'll hear that in Hebrew tomorrow a few times. So again, I'm left wondering, why this repetitive list? Couldn't the text have just said that, you know, this is, this is what they brought? Could have just said, you know, this, the thing that I just read from Nachshon, son of Aminadab. On the first day, this guy from this tribe brought this stuff. And then every other day, we could have just had a list that said on the second day, Solomon came. On the third day, Jessica came. On the fourth day, whatever. It could have just given us a list. Why did it have to go through everything again and again and again, full list, every single day? I because would love, it makes for an easier Torah reading. Because it makes for easier Torah reading, and we are appreciative of that. Um, so I, ask, I want to ask you that question. <coughs> what do you think the reasoning is to kind of go through this again and again? Yeah, Jory. Were you sitting on my deck while I was doing this earlier? <laughs> so, okay, so maybe it's because every gift was important. And so we don't want to shortchange anyone. We don't want to shortchange any tribe. So we want to acknowledge that every gift is important, 100%. Any other ideas of why we need to go through this very long list other than to have easy Torah reading and to acknowledge that every gift is important? Okay. Okay, good. In detail last week. So like everyone has to be counted, so you have to account for everything that they brought. Okay, and happy bat mitzvah anniversary to you. Um, I know, you're about Mr. Twins. So good. So not only is it that we have to acknowledge the gifts that were brought, but we have to acknowledge the people. And so we really want to say that you, Nachshon, and, you know, by extension, you, tribe of Judah, you're important, and so is everybody else. Great. So it's a way to both honor the gifts and honor the people. Any other thoughts? Okay. So, Nachmanides points out that had the text said, Nachshon brought X on the first day and then each person followed on the following days, then this, as we said, would have affected the honor that was due to the others. It would have shortchanged them in some way. It might have seemed like the tribe of Judah was more important or that the other tribes were inferior in some way, and they might not have felt very good about that. But by giving each tribe its own day and restating the list each time with the new day, the new tribe, same list, we are able to uniquely appreciate the offerings that were bought, brought by each and every tribe. As I read this description this week and considered the repetition of these lists, I began thinking about this in the context of the closing out of the school year. And I don't know about you, um, but maybe this is just because I'm a parent myself of a certain age, but my social media feed this week has been brimming with first and last day school pictures, love those, as well as pictures of students celebrating move up days, very exciting, and of course pictures celebrating high school graduations and kind of announcing what they're doing next. Every single one of these pictures brings a smile to my face. And I love seeing all the students in our school and all of my friends all over the world sharing these kinds of pictures. It warms my heart, and every single picture tells a different story. So imagine if instead of posting for each individual child in a family or in a school, CMS instead shared a message that said something like, Mazel Tov to Moishi for graduating from CMS, and Mazel Tov to all the other kids as well. Like, that might not feel very good. Or imagine if instead of every student walking across the stage to receive a diploma at a graduation, we had one student go and then said, and this is for the rest of you as well. The others might not feel so great. I mean, how, I, mean maybe, I don't know how much you would feel in that moment, um, but I can imagine how the other kids might have felt. By posting each picture for each individual student or handing a diploma to every graduate, we're able to appreciate 
their specific and unique accomplishments, the gifts that they bring, as Dory said. Though the ritual of calling each graduate up to walk across the stage and individually receive a diploma might take a long time, just as it is in our Parsha, all of these verses, this ritual gives each student and their family an opportunity to feel seen, to feel appreciated, and to feel celebrated. And even so, as each student walks across the stage or as each chieftain brings their identical gifts to the tabernacle, the scene might look similar or identical to the outside observer or reader, but we actually have no idea what went into reaching that particular moment for each student or for each chieftain. Our well-curated social media posts or a long-winded list in Torah rarely capture the full story. Grabbing a diploma in one's hand does not reveal the ease with which one student may have moved through the year academically or socially, or the obstacles that another might have experienced in the same arenas. We might have an image and a short description, but we don't know the intent, we don't know the feeling, we don't really know the full story of what the accomplishments might mean for each student. And the same is true for each chieftain that brought offerings for each tribe. The German Orthodox Rabbi Shlomo Brewer teaches, the Torah does not repeat the description or the offerings 12 times in order to teach us that each prince brought exactly the same as every other prince. We do this as a reminder that it is not what a person gives that is important, rather how a person gives that is important. And we don't get all these details in Torah, so we have to kind of fill in the blanks ourselves. Some chieftains may have brought their gifts enthusiastically, while others may have brought their gifts begrudgingly. For some, the agreed upon amount might have felt like a sacrifice for them or for their tribe, and for others, it might have been a small amount of plentiful holdings that that particular tribe had in that moment. But by listing all the gifts separately, we're able to appreciate each gift from each tribe in its own right, just as we are able to celebrate each and every graduate as they walk across the stage. Approaching each moment with fresh eyes and open hearts can sometimes be daunting, as, well, you know, as we read each of these descriptions over and over again in our Parsha. But it is also what this Parsha is calling us to do, so that we can celebrate the achievements of our friends and loved ones and not experience these moments as rote or mundane. So this weekend, we celebrate Zoe. And though she is not the first, and God willing, not the last student to become bat mitzvah at BTBJ, we'll be back here next week, Isla. <laughs> this weekend is about your accomplishments and all the hard work that you put in all the support that you received from your loved ones throughout your life, and all the gifts that you, that you and your family bring to our community. We look forward to continuing to celebrate with you, and we applaud you for all of your accomplishments as we recognize the gifts that each unique person here brings to our community. So we hope that there is much more goodness to come. Shabbat Shalom. So we will continue with our service on page 55, and I invite Zoe to come forward to help lead us in Kiddush. <clears throat> oh, and I will give it to you. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. 
continue on page 56, and we invite you to rise for Alenu. Alenu Page 58 for Kadish Yato Mourners Kaddish. And this week in our community, we observe the yard sites of Ray Barrow, Abraham Brown, Louis Kramer, Esther Fisher, Juliet Fox, Libby Kaner, David Kugler, Abraham Edward Miller, Louis Reeder, Erwin Sandos, Goldie Schwartz, Goldie Shore, Milton Stander, Solomon Weinberg, Janice Wexelblatt. Yaakov Ben Naftali, Edith Kobat, Jack Erzner, Anna Forstadter, Jay Harris, Daniel Kelman, Samuel Lippman, Arnold Miller, Jules Rosenberg, Francis Schwartz, Edie Searman, Joseph Shore, Fanny Toll, and Ella Weinstein. We also send our condolences to Ben Baldridge and his family on the passing of Carol Baldridge. As we recite Mourner's Kaddish, we also are, of course, thinking about your grandmother, mother, family member, Debbie Schwartz, and how incredibly proud she would be of Zoe tonight. I invite those who are in mourning or observing a yard site to please rise, along with all those for whom it is their custom to rise in support of the mourners or for those who have no one to say Kaddish for them. Yitz Kadal, Yitz Kadash, Shmei Rabbah, Vialma Divra Kirute Vialmi Mahute Bahaye Hon of Yome Hon Bukaye de Ho Bait Yisrael Baagala of Yisman Kari Imru Amen Yehesh me Rabba Mabarak Lealam Lame Amaya Yit Barak Vish Tabak Vit Paar Vit Roman Vit Nase Beat Hadar Beat Alevi Talal Shemade Kudasha Brihu La Ela Vinkol Birhata Vishirata Tushbihata Venehemata Ta Amiran Bialma Vimru Amin Yehe Shlomo Rabba Min Shemaya The Haim Alenu Vialkol Yisrael Vimru Amin Ose Shalom Vimramav Hu Ya Ase Shalom Alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. May the one who creates peace on high bring peace to us, to all Israel, and all who dwell on earth, and we say together, Amen. Amen. So tomorrow morning we will join back here together at 9.30 as we celebrate as Zoe becomes bat mitzvah. Um, and uh, we have a lot going on in our community still, even as we're kind of winding down in some ways for the summer. Um, but we have Minion on Zoom on Sunday mornings at 9.30 and Thursday mornings at 7.30. And we'll be back here again next weekend to celebrate with Isla. And I'm glad that you're with us this evening. So um, the calendar for the, for the summer will be coming out soon with all of our offerings. Uh, so stay tuned. Um, so we can close uh, on page 75. I invite you to turn to um, the priestly blessing, which is very appropriate to be reciting this weekend, as you'll hear more about tomorrow, um, as it makes an appearance in our Parsha this week. Um, but there is a tradition to bless our children every Friday night with the words of this most ancient blessing. And so we learned this week that uh, God instructed Aaron uh, to, to bless all of the Israelites with this blessing. 
and we can continue down that road by blessing one another. So if you have loved ones nearby and you want to reach out and hold them, I invite you to do that. Um, if you want to think about someone and kind of send your love their way, even if they're not in this room, same to all you on live stream, uh, we invite you to, to kind of hold them in your heart so that we can all bless one another. And if you were sitting in the back row, thank you for going to those who were to your <laughs> May God bless you and protect you. May God's face give light to you and show you favor. May God's face be lifted toward you and bestow upon you peace. Can you hear at own? May it be God's will. Amen. Amen. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat.